Mark Lang Jardin so is the uh, fifth studio album by the pop band Coldplay. Um, yeah, honestly, I always like the band. Um, I know they're one of the hated, most hated bands of all time, but I still like them. But you know, that comes with a risk if you are one of the most popular bands of ever. Um, yeah, you know. Um, this is probably their poppiest album up to this point. They have released a more popular album, but we may get to that if people want, but there we go. Um, yeah, so overall this is a... Um, you know, people say it's, it's a disappointment, but I wouldn't really call it that. Um, it's more of a different album, I would say. It's not per se, um, you know, like bad or something, but it's a more commercial album. It's a more commercial sounding album. It's more poppier. It's not really archy anymore. It's not really rock. Because with their first four albums, they were kind of like more of an alt rock band with some. Um, <coughs> art pop influences, actually post bird pop in the early days, but there we go. Um, but they have completely thrown it out of the roof and out of the wind, out of the roof, out of the window, and they're basically a pop band now. So, um, you yeah, know, and I don't have a problem with that. I love a good pop song, and this album has plenty of that, so there we go. Uh, requested by Steven Young, who wanted me to check out some disappointing albums but you know <coughs> we will see about that that's of course for us to judge or in this case me uh, so we have the first one which is Marlon Xalot so just kind of opening up the record just kind of opening up the world of Marlon Xalot um, I'm not exactly sure what that means I believe it's like um, my friend or something in Fucking galar galar kind of language, I don't know, fuck no. Um, and then we have Hurt Like Heaven, which is uh, a beautiful song. I, I really love this song because it's mainly, uh, arguably the most artsiest Coldplay song ever, really. Or at least at this point. Well, really, after this point, they weren't really getting more progressive or artsy, but still a really good song. I really like the atmosphere on this record. Um, I do really like the solo towards the ending of the album, that's really good. Um, <coughs> and actually I believe it's also the first solo of, um, of Coldplay ever. Because I believe they didn't have a solo on the first four. So, you know, I do like the solo, that's pretty good. And, um, you know, love a good guitar solo and that's definitely present on there. Um, yeah, great atmosphere, good guitar solo, actually the first guitar solo of Coldplay ever, and I believe the last one, but yeah, when they do occur, it is nice to listen to them, so, so there we go, great song. Um, yeah, this is basically these couple of songs, they are really the peak of the record, and then it kind of goes downhill, but still some moments here and there. Uh, then, we have, then we have, of course, Paradise, which is, which is the, um, which was, at some point, I believe, one of the most viewed YouTube videos ever, really. I can't recall that, but I believe it's one, it was one of the most viewed songs ever. Uh, so it was, that was pretty major. Um, yeah, you know, Paradise, it's a great song, it's a great pop tune. Um, yeah, you know, I do really love the orchestral intro or whatever that is, wh whatever that is. Um, I do really like the instrumentation, song builds up really nicely, nice bass. I do really, I do really like the vocals by Chris Martin. So for all, it's, it's a catchy, feel-good song, you know, ready for summer, stuff like that. Um, it's nice to listen to, you know, it's... Um, not the most difficult song in the world, but that's that's pop for you. And yeah, you know, just a lovely pop song. Um, I do really like the um, the para para refrain at the ending or throughout the entire song in the chorus. That's really catchy. 
Uh, just a really catchy, captivating song. It's an anthem, and I believe it's still to this day Coldplay's most popular song, really. Not my favorite though, but it is their most popular, so if you want to start somewhere, then this song and really this record in general is really a good starting point, I would say. Their disappointment, yeah. not in my opinion, but um, it was a decline in quality, but it's still really catchy, still a really good album. Um, then we have Charlie Brown, and this is, um, yeah, this is the best song of the album, really. You can say Paradise, but I think that Charlie Brown takes the um, uh, the top spot for me, the cherry on top. Uh, just really, it kind of has those same kind of few good elements that Paradise had, but it kind of has a better guitar riff, it has some really nice piano. Um, and just overall, the song in general is just really uh, feel good, it's really poppy, it's really dreamy as well, like, like early Coldplay dreamy. Uh, it's commercial, it's just, um, and I think what I love about the song so much is that it sounds nostalgic in a way, you know, Charlie Brown, classic, and it just, you know, it just sounds nostalgic to me. I believe that Chris wrote this in, in his daughter's dollhouse or something, <laughs> I've heard something about that, but um, he wrote it in the time when he felt nostalgic, and that is exactly what he conveys in the song. It's really a nostalgic song. It has a really catchy hook, really great, you know, ooze by uh, Chris Martin. Really catchy, really commercial, really emotional sounding uh, vocals. That's what I really love about the song. And it actually goes out on a really high note, you know, like falsetto almost by uh, Chris. Um, and I do, I do really love this as well. That. Um, that's Chris is kind of a falsetto in this uh, song, great piano playing. Overall, just a great song, really. Love it. It's unfortunately it it is unfortunately the peak of uh, the peak of the album, but there's still there's still some good songs here and there. So now we have Us Against the World, which is just kind of a uh, generic um, "Ooh, we're better than the world, everything will be a all right" song. You know, it's not a bad song per se, but Definitely kind of a disappointment uh, compared to the earlier songs. So there we go, you know, good track, it uh, makes me feel good when I listen to it. Probably makes you feel good. Um, but overall I do think that it kind of misses uh, some memorability, if that is a word. Probably is. It sounds, uh, sounds existing, <laughs> fuck no. Uh, then we have M M I X and I just don't understand what uh, Coldplay is going for with these short ass introduction songs. You know they're just kind of pointless in my opinion. You know, just Malik Zalato and M, M M I X and there's one other transition on there which I just don't understand. You know you could have had a um, a ten track album or something that would have been more consistent. But hey. You know, it's still so decent, I guess. But for me, you know, it's just not my thing really, it's just, you know, it just doesn't add anything. I do really like the, um, when the song starts off with the kind of uh, heavenly uh, a core or something, with a chore, I do really like that. And uh, Every Tear Drop, Every Tear Drop is a waterfall, is the centerpiece of the album. I do really like the, uh, the catchy nature of the track. You really like Chris's singing when he opens it, and you have a, uh, a guitar intro. I do really like that by uh, Johnny Buckland. Um, you know, not the most intricate guitar player. I mean, he's a fucking cool player in the corner. Um, but definitely, you know, some really nice licks, some really catchy commercial uh, hits. And the song always kind of uh, made me feel nostalgic. Just a really nostalgic sounding song, at least for me. Um, so overall, it gives me a really good feeling inside. Just uh, makes me happy when I listen to it. That you know, that's basically what most pop do. Most pop does. So there we go. Uh, Such so a happy song. It just kind of gets um, in a higher key uh, register as it progresses, which I um, as it progresses, which I really uh, love. You know, it gives the song more power and power until it explodes in the middle. And then you have that. Um, 
um, you know, that's the drum outro by uh, Will Champion. Just a really, you know, good composed song and I really like it, so there we go. Uh, another, one, another one of my favorites, together with the first three. Um, then we have Major Minus, and this is definitely a underrated track. I do really like this track, but um, I do think that the production is a little bit too, um, um, you know, too iffy for me. It just sounds kind of too robotic or too dull for me to really enjoy. Still a good song overall, still has this really emotional moment, and still one of the peaks of the album, I would say, but. Um, overall, just not really my cup of tea. It just sounds too, um, yeah, just too weirdly produced. I think you know, you know, because Coldplay used to be like a really natural sounding vanilla band, which I still really love. But, um, but I think that the production is kind of iffy on here. Not on all of the songs, but kind of on the record in general. It just kind of sounds too robotic or too. Um, it tries to be too artsy sometimes, which just kind of falls, on the f uh, falls flat on its face sometimes, but there we go. Um, yeah, you know, good song, but production is a bit iffy and the song is a bit bland, but still pretty good. <laughs> bland, but good. Yeah. You know what I mean. It's, it's a good song, but you've heard it before. Um, then we have UFO, UFO, however you want to say it. Yeah, this is kind of filler, just kind of continues that weird production style that they have on here and it just kind of leads into the next track which is Princess of, Princess of China and hands down, at least for me, the really the only good Rihanna song if you want to call it that because she only sings on there. But I do really think she supports the beat, she does really support Chris's singing. They are a great couple, on the song at least. Uh, you know, Chris, don't get, don't get mad. <laughs> you know, it's probably the only time I'll, I will ever mention that piece of shit, but there we go. Um, but overall, it's a good track. I do really think that they support each other greatly on this track. Uh, the song does kind of build in progression, you know, in a higher key again, which I did already on Everterrip as a waterfall. Uh, but I still enjoy it. I still enjoy the track. It still is a really archy kind of like. Um, Really interesting track to see Coldplay and Rihanna perform. They're both really big pop stars, but in my opinion, Coldplay is actually good. But you know, that's, that's of course debatable. Um, so this is a good track. I do really love the piano as well on this track. You know, when they sing and you have that one piano note. You know, you don't have a, you don't have to have a really intricate piano style to really uh, make me feel or something because you know some of the simple uh, most simple notes can get you right there it's not exactly what this song did to me but it did it did stru struck a chord with me and i did really enjoy it so and i would say yeah probably the last um i don't want to say great but the last uh, pretty good song of the record um, you know, this doesn't mean that all of the songs after this are shit. But it means all of the songs are less commercial and just more bland and more forgettable. So there we go. Uh, then we have Up in Flames and this song is kind of a re um, repeated song after Major Minus. But this song is just kind of less feel, more production text. Um, it's just overall more forgettable and exactly like the title suggests, Up in Flames. Then we have a hopeful trans. Fucking up. Then we have a hopeful transmission. I have no idea what this uh, does. It does absolutely nothing because it doesn't even lead uh, lead up to a big hit or something like um, "Hurt Like Heaven" or "Every Tear Is a Waterfall," you know, or "Prince of Princess of China." It doesn't do anything. So it's pretty much pointless. You know, like the other two uh, fucking intros, it's just it's useless really. Just cut them off of the record, and this could have been a better record, but not by much. But there we go, just a little bit. Um, then we have "Don't Don't Let It Break Your Heart," which is a pretty emotionally pinned track, but it does kind of follow the same problems I have with "Major Minor" and "Up in Flames." That the song just is kind of too tacky for me. It's just kind of too bland. It's it tries to be arty, it tries to be emotional, 
we have some really emotional vocals uh, here and there, some really emotionally piano as well. Uh, but, but I just think that the song is kind of um, not per se falls flat on its face, but it doesn't. I don't get it, you know. I don't really get it because um, that's mainly because um, when I listen to the song probably live or just like a cover or something like a really silent, isolated cover, I will probably love it because it's it is an emotionally pinned track. There are some are some emotional vocal performance and lyrics on this track but the production just hinders it, it just really hinders it, it just throws a random beat here and there and it just kind of ruins the whole track I think um, well not per se ruins but it does hinder the track, it does damage the track and I do think that in the long run and actually in the, in the entire run it just kind of yeah, it does ruin the song really. It's not a bad track. It's it is one of the weakest songs of the albums, but it's still decent, you know. Well, that proves that this record is actually good. So there we go. Um, and then we have the closing track, which is up with the birds. And I would say that if you would drop this song, maybe or don't let it break your heart and the fucking transition. Well, well, they can stay. I don't give a fuck, but. But if you would drop them, don't let it break your heart and have this as a closing song. Although you would end with 13. Ooh, bad luck. <laughs> no. um, but yeah, I, I, I do think that with the birds, kind of don't let it break your heart part 2. But it actually, you know, drops the, the crazy production that that song has. And it's just kind of a closing, mellow, peaceful sounding song. So they have a perfect closing track on here, I do think that this is the best song since Every Third Up Is A Waterfall uh, so this is a good song, I do really like it, it's really melancholy, it reminds me of Charlie Brown uh, reminds me of Hurt Like Heaven Again, it reminds me of the um, sorry, uh, it reminds me of the uh, earlier hits of the album and you know, up with, up with the birds, going to heaven, hurt like heaven, all these heavenly references, gods, you know, or all play for gods, <laughs> fucking hell, yeah, I should just under there. Um, so overall, this was a good album, I would say, it's pretty good. I would say the first seven songs are pretty good slash great in my opinion. Most of them are great in my opinion and some of them are weaker, but they're still pretty good. And I think that Major Minus is bland, I think that UFO is useless, Princess of China, Princess of China is pretty good. Up in Flames, Up in Flames is bad, or not bad, but it's just alright. A hopeful transmission is useless really. Don't let it break your heart is, um, could have been better. Weakest track of the album in my opinion, but still alright. And with the birds is pretty good, this is a pretty fitting ending for the record. As so this was a good album, I enjoyed it. You know, it's not... It is a disappointment, I think, because... I did think that Viva La Vida is an instant classic, or like a modern classic in like today's music. In today's pop music especially, fucking hell. So, I do like it, I do like this album, it's pretty good. It's still, you know, for 2011, then I believe 2011 was... One of the worst years of music ever. Yeah, it was a really bad year for music, but um, but we still got this record, and compared to that chart, this record is actually really great. But I'm comparing it to my personal taste, and compared to that, it's pretty weak. Um, so I have to kind of like uh, consider the score. I do know the score already, but you know. It's not as good as the stuff that I love, and it's way better than everything that was released that year. Most of it at least, if not all of it. So I'm gonna give this record an 8 out of 10. It is a really good album, it's really solid. Um, I do get the hate, I do get that uh, people say, oh it's a disappointment. Coldplay sold out, but they were always a pop band, they were really always a pop band, so fuck off. Uh, but they just kind of... Uh, through their rock, their kind of, you know, um, their rock sound that they had from their prior bands like Oasis and Radiohead, you know, bands that 
uh, the brick pop movement in general, the verve, you know, maybe some blur. Um, I don't believe they were <laughs> inspired by blur, but especially from uh, Oasis and Radio, they have major influence from those bands, uh, the verve, like I said. Snuggle mm. And also, they dropped the rock sound. I, I, I do think that's really disappointing, but we don't. But we did get a really catchy, poppy record, and no, and you know, I love a good pop song, I love a good pop album, and this is a really good pop album. You know, uh, I do really like it, but it's not the first four. But that was not what uh, what Coldplay was going for, so I still like it. And uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. I, I, I have almost no time anymore, so I'm gonna end it there. Uh, follow me on Metal Storm, Metal Storm, Coldplay. <laughs> Perfect. Um, follow me on Metal Storm, on music, and on other channel, on my other show. I wanted to say their name already, but channel as well. And follow me on my other channel. Fucking <laughs> shadow. I want to say it's channel and shadow in once. Shadow. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. Um, yeah, I have no time anymore, I believe. But follow me on uh, my YouTube channel, my other YouTube channel, uh, Shadow Realms, and this channel as well if you're not subscribed already. And let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. I think it's a really good album, but it's not the first four. And basically, everything after this, ever since this record came out, they just kind of never really recovered, if you want to call it that. But they just released really two super albums, but I still think this is a good album, so uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. God bless, take care, and peace, and Coldplay, yeah. good band, listen to them, listen to the haters, they're a solid band, worse from us.